Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for November 24th. November 24th is the 328th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, with 37 days remaining until the end of the year. Today we're going to start with the year 1807, when a Mohawk chief named Chief Tyendangia, also known by his English name, Joseph Brandt, died at his home in Burlington, Ontario. Before dying, he reportedly said, have pity on the poor Indians. If you have any influence with the great, endeavor to use it for their good. On November 24th of 1835, the Texas provincial government authorized the creation of a horse-mounted police force called the Texas Rangers. They're now called the Texas Ranger Division of the Texas Department of Public Safety. My late mother was a big fan of the TV show, Walker, Texas Ranger. On November 24th of 1849, a fellow named John Froelich was born. He's the inventor of the first internal combustion traction motor, also known as a tractor, and he was born on this day in Girard, Iowa. He was kind of in the business of harvesting. He would go from state to state and thresh people's wheat for him for a fee. He started out using a steam-powered thresher, and that got the job done, but it was very heavy to transport, expensive to operate, and particularly dangerous in that, being a steam-powered device, used fire, and if it was windy, the fire could, you know, throw some sparks out into the field and burn up the entire crop. So, He experimented in the off-season and innovated his way into trying to figure out how to get an internal combustion gas-operated engine attached to that thresher. And he did. He did it. And it didn't throw any sparks. (laughs) So it worked. And the next season when they went out on their harvesting tour, his crew was able to thresh more than a thousand bushels a day with that machine using only 26 gallons of gas. He formed a company called the Waterloo Gasoline Traction Engine Company, and in 1918, the John Deere Plow Manufacturing Company bought Waterloo for $2,350,000. The Waterloo Tractor Works is still owned by John Deere, and it remains one of the largest tractor factories in the United States. In 1859, Charles Darwin published On the Origin of Species. The Civil War Battle of Lookout Mountain took place on this day in 1863. On November 24, 1868, American pianist and composer Scott Joplin was born. And on November 24, 1888, American author and educator Dale Carnegie was born. Probably most known for his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, which, by the way, is still popular today. One of the core ideas in his books is that it is possible to change other people's behavior by changing your own behavior towards them. He was 66 when he died in 1955. On this day in 1932 in Washington, D.C., the FBI Scientific Crime Detection Laboratory, better known as the FBI Crime Lab, officially opened on this date. In 1960, Wilt Chamberlain set the NBA rebound record. Philadelphia Warrior Wilt Chamberlain snagged 55 rebounds in a game against the Boston Celtics and set an NBA record for the most rebounds in a single game. Seven foot one inch Chamberlain, still called Wilt the Stilt, the nickname he hated, so I won't call him that here. He died in 1999 of congestive heart failure. He was 63. On this day in 1963, Dallas nightclub owner Jack Ruby killed Lee Harvey Oswald right in the basement of the police station on live television. As you'll remember, Lee Harvey Oswald was accused of assassinating President John Kennedy. In 1969, the Apollo 12 command module splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean, ending the second manned mission to land on the moon. On November 24th of 1971, during a severe thunderstorm over Washington State, a hijacker calling himself Dan Cooper, also known as D.B. Cooper, parachuted from a Northwest Orient Airlines plane with $200,000 in ransom money. 
And while nary a trace of him has ever been found, in 1980, an eight-year-old boy uncovered a stack of nearly $5,880 of the ransom money in the sands along the north bank of the Columbia River, about five miles from Vancouver, Washington. The fate and true identity of Cooper remains a mystery. 1991, Tanzanian English singer-songwriter, lead vocalist of the band Queen, and producer Freddie Mercury, perhaps best known for the hits he wrote for the band Queen, including Killer Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, Somebody to Love, We Are the Champions, Don't Stop Me Now, and Crazy Little Thing Called Love. Freddie died on this date in 1991 at the age of 46. And I think that's going to do it for us today. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. One more time. Annie hears me talking. She's got to come see what's going on. Okay, lay down. <laughs> Let's do that one again. Blah, 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 coffee mug. <laughs> it's late enough in the day that we're off coffee and on busy water. Just read the words. Just read the words. <laughs> That's a lot of words. Hope I pronounced that right. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? Did not a man. Sure would be nice if I could ever read one of these in its entirety without having to start anything over. That would be awesome. I might have to take another look at that. I'm going to have to look at that. This is why I don't do live shows. <laughs>